Mm. Mm-hmm. I've always been a sucker for a nice Chilean Merlot. Now then, what do we have now? Ah, I'm never in these. Fuck it, even Kraut's in it. Every Johnny come. I, I love Kraut, but fucking hell, man. I should have gone after Amazing Atheist for something, should I? Or, or, or at least actually go after people, <laughs> rather than addressing, like, the arguments. <laughs> uh, relational aggression. Uh, it's like Game of Thrones. You either win or you die. Are you able to understand the irony of responding to the perceived political correctness of the left with exasperated reactionary hypersensitivity of your own? For the last time, the word is irony. The R is before the O. There is no such word as irony. As for your point, I am hypersensitive about details and facts because that is productive. I am not hypersensitive about feelings, let alone the feelings of arbitrarily selected demographics, because that is counterproductive. Is that clear? I warn you, I am hypersensitive about clarity. What is it with you people and skulls? <laughs> what do you mean, you people? How do you define right wing? Economic freedom at the expense of social freedom? I haven't written that in stone. It's just it's as much as I can reduce it without critical dilution. Anti-SJWs often have an aversion to being labelled as right-wing. Well, I'm not averse to being called right-wing or left-wing. If someone tells me I'm too right-wing or too left-wing, then it stands to reason I'm likely to contest that. What I don't understand is why you call your opponents right-wing like that's an insult on its own. Nor do I understand why the right wing call their opponents lefties and liberals like that's an insult on its own. I don't consider right wing to be an insult. I consider fascist to be an insult. And I do not consider left wing to be an insult. I consider social justice warrior to be an insult. And no, they are not mutually exclusive. Yet they regularly defend the right and bash the left. Yeah, we bash both. But evidently, you only notice when we bash the left. Do you think your good self might have something to do with that? Therefore, why is being labelled right-wing a bad thing to you? For the same reason it's bad to be labelled white, like it's an insult by itself. It's racist. Unless you're talking about skin cancer or sickle cell anemia, it's fucking racist. And if it's because right-wing is used as a pejorative, can you not see how labelling people as SJWs or regressives is also pejorative? You deserve a pejorative. You are a bitter and feeble-minded imbecile. You are the left-wing equivalent of what is quite pejoratively referred to as a skinhead. <laughs> you are a shithead. Rather than telling people you disagree with to drink bleach... Idiot. The meme is not you should drink bleach. The meme is I'm going to drink bleach. It's an, it's an expression of suicidal desperation. But all your straw-blocked borderline ears can hear is some kind of murderous rage. No wonder so many people are fucking killing themselves. You actually sickened me. You have already failed, you bibbling prat. Wouldn't it be more productive for you to have an actual conversation about the issues you feel matter? Oh, wouldn't it be more productive to actually listen to what anyone's fucking saying? Or is it just easier to do the bleach thing? <laughs> yes! Yes! It is easier! to drink bleach than to get you to listen to a fucking word anyone says. That is the point. Nice. Right, get to fuck. You're the worst one so far. You claim to be proponents- <coughs> No! Fail! Fail! The rational, logical, evidence-based argumentation. It's, it's Phil Moriarty. He's a regular on 60 Symbols. It's an excellent channel, as are all of Brady Heron's outlets, like number five and that. You simply must subscribe, but- Phil! Why, Phil? Why? Rational, logical, evidence-based argumentation. That's great. That's entirely laudable. Many feminists disagree. Many social justice warriors consider rationality to be less laudable than emotion. 
especially when you consider the intersectionality of standpoint theory. But go on, Phil. But when I look at your online activity, when I look at, I don't know, for example, your Twitter feed, that's often not what I see. How do you reconcile this claim to be evidence based and rational and logical against stuff like, oh, I was just trolling you, oh, I was just shit posting or TLDR? Phil, all you've told me is that Twitter sucks. That Twitter is a shitty platform. And I, Phil, I couldn't conceivably agree more. Twitter will turn any given community into a pack of wolves with the collective attention span of a stovepipe sponge. Do you honestly think anti-SJWs are worse than SJWs when it comes to Twitter? They are the reason Joss Whedon left Twitter. They are the reason Stephen Fry left Twitter. That wasn't us. That was the SJWs. You can ask him if you like. Why did you leave Twitter, Stephen Fry? Was it the rare Pepe's? Was it the 13-year-olds saying, go get raped in a fire faggot? Did Harambe touch you in a bad place? He'll tell you no, Phil. It was none of the above. It was the sanctimonious, self-righteous, politically correct moral bullies whom we euphemistically refer to as social justice warriors. Who has been driven off Twitter by anti-SJWs, Phil? I've started the body count on this scale. How's it going on the other? So I'm afraid, Phil, I'm going to have to mark that as a not reasonable question. No, seriously. What is it with you people and skulls? I still don't know what you mean by you people, but whoever they are, they have skulls. I mean, some people don't have tonsils. Some people, some people don't have legs. But I guarantee you, every living person on this earth, sir, has a skull. It's the only body part we could show without being ableist. Are you aware that- You are the dumbest motherfucker I've heard in all my days, Michael. I don't care what the fuck you do. I don't even care what your question is. You are the most jaw-droppingly, willfully ignorant shit-raker I've ever placed begrudgingly into a box in my memory. See Link for more. I, I'm gonna- Count this in the no turd twice rule, Michael. Goodbye forever. Don't ever darken the door of any communication medium ever again. You worsen everything. Next. For the last time, what is it with you people and committing actual literal felonies? And what is it with atheists and despotic regimes? Did you forget you were talking to anti-ideology people and not pro-ideology people. How about you go ahead and argue amongst yourselves about that, rather than trying to get us to do it. Lol. Noobs. Like, you might want to work on that? I mean, I thought the Ralph retort was so rational when he was fantasizing about beating up women with dyed hair, but then he assaulted a police officer and finally I was convinced. BLM made him do it. In videos and in the comment sections, anti-feminists often take up the most extreme, or the weakest feminist position they can find, or they just straight up misrepresent what the feminist position is. Ooh, uh, before I can do this, I need to know one thing about the feminist position. Is it an ideology? <laughs> or a methodology? Instead, why not take up the strongest, most robust feminist argument you can find and really challenge yourself? Did anyone not do he for she? Who was around at the time? Emma Watson's infamous groundbreaking speech. So had millions of academic feminists all over the world patting each other on the back and saying, look how robust this is. Within a week, there were hundreds of responses, each explaining in their own unique journey why that speech was the most short-sighted, hypocritical, self-contradictory, giant knotted mess of broken fairy lights ever passed off as a meaningful series of syllables. Every time you nominate something as strong and robust, we set our sights on it, and it is obliterated within half a news cycle. Now, fissy baby, my darling haunted cabbage patch doll, are you going to nominate something you consider strong and robust about feminism? Or are you just going to keep pretending it exists? 
I am deeply concerned with male addiction rates, suicide rates, and abuse rates. So am I. Because these rates are high and nothing is being done about it. Because I have worked with these issues in the quote-unquote real world. Sorry, what's this? Your life story? Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll, no, I'll totally read that later. Would you be willing as anti-feminists to put aside your differences with feminists for the greater good of addressing these issues, especially as the kind of solutions needed are not necessarily gendered? <laughs> yeah, the sentencing gap doesn't need a gendered solution. False rape accusations don't need a gendered solution. And fatherlessness doesn't need a gendered solution because none of these are gendered issues. But you know what are gendered issues? People interrupting each other. People explaining things to each other, and people greeting each other. Those are gendered issues. Because to a gender studies department, gendered issue means issue that we care about. And if so, I would actually like you to let me know, because I'm not fucking around or presenting any gotchas here. Oh, is that what everyone else is doing? <laughs> so is this video just a series of gotchas and fuck-arounds, but you're the one sensible, virtuous person who actually wants a proper discussion? Get the fuck out. I actually really think that we could get something done if we work together. This is called virtue signaling. It has a definition, and it is you right now. You had an opportunity to speak, and you squandered it. Reassuring everyone that you're a good person. For fuck's sake, everyone thinks... They're a good person who wants a proper discussion. You need to do more than just signal it. Make a fucking point. Oh, wait, you did. Sorry. Men's issues don't need gendered solutions. I forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that sounds like it'll be a super fun conversation. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is the intersectional position, isn't it? Men's issues don't need gendered solutions, but race issues do. This is how we got here, folks. This is how it happened. What is third wave feminism? Oh, God, Steve. Oh, don't make me atomic head desk this motherfucker again. <laughs> yeah, something's gonna give. Because I've often heard you folks insist that you have no objection to feminism in general. It's specifically third wave feminism that you have a quarrel with. So what is third wave feminism specifically? And what specifically about third wave feminism do you have such a problem with? Inapplicable. I don't like any of the waves. I'm very fond of women and their human rights, but there is no wave of feminism I would consider necessary or productive or even ethically sound, if I'm perfectly honest. Now then, Steve, you say you don't have a problem with men, just men's rights advocates. Can you be more specific? And by that, I don't mean think of another five specific lies to make up about the movement as a whole. I mean, can you actually point to something an MRA actually said that other MRAs actually listened to? And don't just go, X is misogynistic, don't deny reality. <laughs> actually, yeah, fucking dissect something. Don't just tell me flies have four legs like your Pliny the fucking Elder. Find one. Look the fuck at it. Why is it that this feminist represents all feminists? I didn't know she was a feminist. I just knew she was disrupting a public speaking event in a deliberate attempt to curtail free speech. And I find that sort of thing risible. Is Trigglypuff actually a feminist? Has anyone actually asked her? Or did you, Ms. Ranting, simply assume that she is a feminist? Why have you done that? Why did you assume Trigglypuff is a feminist? Is it because she was disrupting a public speaking event in a deliberate attempt to cut out free speech? Or was there some other kind of uniform? But this men's rights activist doesn't represent all men's rights activists. Whoa, whoa, wait! Sexism all of a sudden? Ladies and men are different? So we're supposed to punch men and not hit ladies and open doors for men on your own, but not ladies? Fuck you! Get out of my face, you tiny piece of shit! I didn't know he was a men's rights activist. All I know is he's having an argument 
in a McDonald's queue? <laughs> Apparently because of chicken. Is this the worst thing you can find an alleged men's rights activist doing? Because this is probably the best thing you can find a confirmed Black Lives Matter activist doing. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. At least you tried. You probably lied, but you tried. Shives doesn't even try, he just lied. Why am I continually asked to answer for the views of feminists? Why am I continually asked to answer for the views of the right wing? Bearing in mind that I do not consider myself aligned with the right wing, and you do consider yourself aligned with feminism. If I agree with feminism's overall aims, but don't agree much with those particular feminists. Probably because you have the same aims as those feminists. Or at least the person you're talking to has suspected so. For instance, if I point out that males are being underserved in the education system and the legal system, you might tell me it's justified because women have been oppressed throughout all history by men. And if I point out that men are being imprisoned with no trial and no hearing on nothing but the word of a woman, then a radical feminist might tell me it's justified because women have been oppressed throughout history by men. Oh, sorry, you agree with that too? Okay, fifth gear. If I point out that men are being systematically euthanized down to 10% of the population, then a double radical super saver feminist might tell me it's justified because women have been oppressed throughout history by men. You see, in all three cases, the justification is the same. Women have been oppressed throughout history by men. It's called patriarchy theory. We don't like that theory. We find it flawed. I don't care if you identify as a feminist or if you've never heard of feminism. If you espouse the theory that men have oppressed women throughout history, then I will hold you accountable to it. And I will continue to comprehensively catalogue a litany of persons in whose political company you stand. If it just so happens, there's a fiercely disproportionate amount of those persons do indeed identify as feminists, well, then someone's dropped a QED here and it ain't you. Does that mean that I can ask you to answer for anybody who labels themselves similarly to you, even if you don't agree much? Yeah, try focusing on beliefs rather than labels on theories rather than groups, on field guides rather than dictionaries. You'll go places. If estus are bad because- <laughs> Estus! If estus are bad because- <laughs> I don't know if estus are bad, but I don't know what they are. Is it short for super Jew? <laughs> they don't exist, my darling. There's no such thing as super Jews. Your Aryan thoroughbred ancestors made it up to spook you into obedience, like a modern day grim tale. If SDUs are bad because they spend too much time whining and don't talk about real problems, then why aren't you talking about those problems instead of just whining about the other people over and over and over for literally years? I, it's, it's second time, dude. If you're an atheist, you have completely fucked everything up. If, if you're religious, have fun arguing with the atheists by whom you are currently surrounded. I mean, in the scale of priorities, that's like even lower, right? You know, you've got the real problems, you've got the things that feminists worry about, and then you've got you going, oh, how, how dare they? Is it possible that some anti-SJWs are in camp one there? Just how dare they have different priorities from me? Like, is it possible some of the people who have real problems, like the people who've actually experienced racism and sexual assault, is it possible that some of those people are anti-SJW and anti-feminist? Because they don't appreciate living in the shadow of a citadel of professional victims and their first world problems. And how do you respond when rape victims say, fuck feminism? Well, then all they do is whine about feminism, so they're in camp three, fuck them. That's what you've got here, isn't it? Aryan bonsai lumberjack man. There are people with real problems in camp one, but if they express any dissatisfaction with feminism, 
they get put straight on the short train to Camp 3. Is that accurate? Why can't they do what I do? Whine about whining. Yeah, and you're whining about that. And I'm whining about you. Ha ha ha. It's called a dialogue, dickhead. It's one of those things you virtue signal about wanting to have. But no, I forgot. When you do it, it's healthy dialogue. When we do it, we're just whining. Even if we are rape victims. Fuck you. Forever. For a living. <laughs> People working in universities for a living are walking around with bullshit like this in their heads and teaching it to students. That is a problem. A large problem. An urgent problem. When a problem is that large and that urgent, it creates jobs. That's healthy. Yes, it is. Deal with it. Why don't you seem as concerned with actual feminist theory in academia as you are with wrecking people for views? Yeah, I will study anything that's not behind a paywall or under permanent lock and key, held hostage by the academic clergy. Show us the files, Koss! What have you got to hide? And wrecking things for views means re-examining societal norms in a public polemic for the sake of awareness raising. Yeah, we do the same thing as you, except we don't feel the need to refer to everything by a bunch of euphemistic postmodern jargon. We will use base, simple language. We will call ourselves the worst thing you can think of. We will make cartoons of ourselves, and we will still effortlessly unravel your piss-weak arguments, handcuffed and blindfolded with one bollock tied behind someone else's back. We do it without the virtue signaling, because we don't need it. Since so many of you profess to be admirers of second-wave feminism as opposed to third-wave feminism, I... No! No, Steve! No! Where are you getting this? I thought it would be interesting to ask which second wave feminists in particular do you appreciate? Which books written by second wave feminists have you read and found interesting? Which second wave feminist activists have you specifically admired? I think they're talking about Christina Hoff Summers and Camille Paglia, but that doesn't indicate an admiration for second wave feminism. I mean, The Colour and the Shape had all the Foo Fighters' best songs on it, but that didn't make it their best album. See what I mean? And this is only even relevant if you like the Foo Fighters. Are you allowed to like the Foo Fighters, Steve? You don't even attempt to understand what they're trying to say. Why is trying and failing to debunk a study into sexual assault the number one priority for a rational thinker now? Why is trying and failing the number one priority? By golly, you're clever, aren't you? It must be because you have a typewriter in your office. Yeah, failing is not the number one priority, Professor. Trying and succeeding in debunking whatever is debunkable is a high priority of rational thinkers. Now, can you fill me in on why there's an entire department in every university whose number one priority is fudging? sexual assault studies, and hiding the results when they don't match your predetermined conclusions. Release the files, Koss! Your fucking pocket troll does not scare me. Doesn't it... does it maybe... maybe... <laughs> Fuck off, you useless little shit! Do you have a job in a university? Is this what part is for academic reasoning these days? Maybe say something about your priorities? Does it maybe? Does it ma <laughs> <laughs> The British education system used to be the envy of the world. Dignitaries from countries all over the world would send their children here with no expense spared. And you people, if you'll pardon the faux pas, you people have turned it into a laughing stock. History will remember you as the cultural barbarians you are. Fuck off and gas yourself to death with the sweet smell of your own farts, you insectivorous dipshit. Nah, it's fine, it's fine, it's the feminazis, we have to stop them. They're taking away our video games. Look, Anita, I'm sorry, but we, we, I, I can't, we, we can't actually destroy video games, that doesn't make any sense. But we sure can destroy chemistry departments! We can choke them to death with sexist quotas that no one asked for! Fuck rat, sack this man! Find him, sack him, here's a disgrace! Next. One of the major arguments Fuck's sake. that I see in many of your videos is that it is possible to separate criticism of the religion of Islam from the actual Muslim people. <laughs> oh, yes, I think you might have got the wrong guy here. I, I, I can assure you 
the subject of Islam is not uncontroversial in the sphere you're addressing. And yet, this line seems to be crossed very often. I see things like raghead or camel fucker or other things like that in your comment sections. I see people taking very serious shots at Muslims in videos and hangouts, and they don't get called out. Again, examples would be nice. Was there something else that happened in McDonald's once? At least not that I can see. Think about that. So my question is this, why should a person of conscience who is concerned about the Muslim people and their community not being harmed or mistreated, why should they believe that you're actually only attempting to look at the ideas and talk about the ideas if you ignore bigotry that's occurring right in front of you? Are any of you calling each other out for the bigoted things you've said in this video? Or, or, or do none of you find any of this bigoted? Right, well, you're telling us to clean house when, for all you know, you live in a fucking sewer. By the way, you do. And in that light, would you be willing to break bread and salt with moderate Muslim people on your videos, have hangouts, invite them to your channels? Yes, we often speak to Muslims and ex-Muslims, and guess what? Quite a lot of them don't like feminism. Do you care about the opinions of Muslims and ex-Muslims who don't like feminism? And if not, I wonder how much this explains of the geopolitical state of the 21st century. Just in order to build some bridges there and to learn more about what they think and how they feel and what their experience has been so that information and knowledge can be furthered. I can't believe I got through that. Again, that was about five seconds of point and about 65 seconds of pointless virtue signaling fluff. Trim the gristle. Your mind is fat. You denied that systemic racism against black people is like a thing. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. Like totally a thing. <laughs> but you're going to have to show me the system. If it's systemic discrimination, you should be able to point to the system in question, so to speak. For instance, the education system discriminates against white people by refusing them scholarships because of their race. Whereas the legal system discriminates against black people by giving them harsher sentences for the same convictions. In general, if so, what? Okay, just just step over. Just cover your ears for a second and let the smart people talk. <laughs> uh, are, are smart people like a thing? If not, why is it so much more important to you to demonize groups like Black Lives Matter? Than because they kill cops. Because they encourage young black men to kill cops. They don't just rap about it, they rally about it. I think that might be an irresponsible thing to do, especially in universities on the extorted dollar of gullible citizens. And to actually use your platforms to discuss actual solutions to issues surrounding race and racism. All right, I've got an idea. Let's close the gender sentencing gap. The racial sentencing gap, as I said, is skewed in white people's favor, but the gender sentencing gap is six times wider and it favors women. Riddle me this. If closing the racial sentencing gap will save a thousand innocent black men from wrongful imprisonment, then how many innocent black men will you save by closing the gender sentencing gap? I wonder how much time and effort you are going to prioritize trying to debunk what I just said. If you've ever discussed or done a video about black on black crime, when are you going to do a video about white on white crime and what we as white people can do to solve the problems in our community? Give them back their fathers. Next. Why is a literal teenager's different definition of racism from you so horrifying that you all have to go, No! No, we have to stop him! Why is a literal teenager's Different idea of what should go on the £10 note! So horrifying that you all have to go, No! No! We have to throw him in prison!
Whoops, it was a woman. We accidentally imprisoned a woman for electronically disagreeing with another woman. Never mind, we'll keep trying until we find a male. But you probably think she deserved that, don't you? She deserved to go to prison for telling a feminist on Twitter to go fuck herself. But Milo Stewart doesn't deserve to be, what was it, debunked for saying all white people are racist. Milo Stewart is white. It's You are a piece of person. You know that? You are a walking clavicle fracture. You are a human leg wound. You've got to debunk him now! Ah! Wherever did you get the idea that racism was a self-applied identity? It's not an identity, Steve. It's a description. Wherever did you get the idea that it's an identity? And if the only true racists are the racists who self-identify as racists, how can we ever expect to make any social progress to reduce racism? Well, we could start with Black Lives Matter. Or did I just answer my own question? No. A rhetorical question is not necessarily a question, but it's not an answer either. No bad. You often say that you are for equality of opportunity, but if people of color, for instance, have to overcome barriers whites do not, such as discrimination and unequal treatment, as are well documented in various studies. Yes, and if we put any effort at all into debunking those studies, then hoity douchebags in retro tinted university offices will whine at us, presumably from Camp 6 or wherever the fuck we are now then how can the current situation be thought of as equal opportunity in any real way? And why do you consider it racist to discuss these issues? Well, I just told you, whites are the only race that don't get free scholarships because of their race. Was it racist of me to bring that up? Do you understand basic English syntax? Like, you know, if I say this cat is pretty, I don't mean that all other cats aren't pretty. Yeah, on point, bruv. Can I be a men's rights advocate without being called a misogynist? And I promise you, if a male lives matter movement emerges in which university professors are training students to hold an irrational and murderous hatred for female police officers, then I will distance myself from that movement as much as philosophically and physically possible. In the meantime, see if you can hold black women to even a fraction of the standard to which you hold black men. That might help. Like, do you really not get why saying all lives matter in response to black lives matter is not only racially insensitive, but just patently ridiculous? White power. Any questions? Isn't it offensive to men to assume that a man could only ever want equality for women and therefore be comfortable with feminism as a whole in order to get laid and that reduces us to beasts? If that was the case, wouldn't I attempt to get laid from my views instead of not ever trying that? That was a hell of a mouthful, my friend. Um, hey, don't you think if I was actually a rapist, like y'all say I am, then I wouldn't be so stupid as to put my real name, real face, and real voice on the internet for thousands to see. <laughs> Shit, I forgot about Hannibal. <laughs> Are you guys, uh, how is he? Are you guys still in touch? If you say you're an egalitarian, will you call out the man-hating slurs that you see coming from people within your community? <laughs> uh, yes! Christy, very much so. No matter how unpopular it makes me. People who use terms like cuck. Yep, done that one. It means your woman has gone off you, so you're less of a man. I think it's a hilariously ironic thing for an anti-feminist to call anyone. The, the, the word gets mixed reactions, and my reactions get mixed reactions. Because we are a mixed community. Yeah, you like a diverse community, we like a mixed community. What's the difference? They mean exactly the same thing, except your word is magic! Beta male. Don't think I've done that one yet, um, but it, it does have some basis in evolution, doesn't it?
I mean, if wolves could talk, they would definitely have a word for beta male. Maybe they do have a word for it. You know, some wolfy, howly, woofy word. <laughs> I mean, beta is really just a slang word for subordinate. Yes, some of our slang words are in ancient Greek. Maybe that's not hip in your hood, darling, but it's how we roll. Faggot. <laughs> they're gonna poop that, Christy. They're gonna they're gonna take your faggot and Hank Green's faggot and they're gonna poop them together. This is a masterpiece. Precisely because you don't want them to. Or mangina. I've only used that one a couple of times. I've mostly grown out of it. It's a, it's a little bit like calling a black Republican an Uncle Tom. Sort of crude. It's either inaccurate or crude. All of these things basically distill men down into thinking that the most important thing about them is to be having sex with a woman. Uh, cook, yes. Beta male, not quite. Faggot, no. Mangina, absolutely not. Being irrationally overprotective of women is not the same as wanting to have sex with them. Otherwise, no gay men would be feminists. In case you haven't noticed, many are. That's rather offensive. Well, colour me gobsmacked. So what are you doing to stop this kind of behaviour in your community? I don't take it upon myself to stop behaviour. I prefer to encourage other behaviour. To encourage a better understanding of the world for people to base their behaviour around. I promote based behaviour. Back once again with the Renegade Master. Your turn, Christy. Will you call out the man-hating slurs that you see coming from people within your community? People who use terms like sexist, racist, homophobic, bigoted. All of these things basically distill men down into thinking that the most important thing about them is offensive. So what are you doing to stop this kind of behavior in your community? I didn't think it would be this easy. I expected easy, but this is like fucking a knob of butter. What is the number of- Oh god, Phil, why? Why? How? What is the number of followers, the number of likes, the number of dislikes, the number of retweets, the number of subscribers, any of those numbers, any of those metrics? What have they got to do with the argument? Okay, and what do academic credentials have to do with anything if you don't peer review? Deepak Chopra, for example. Excellent example, Phil. Now, just for Dr. Splinter's benefit, could you go ahead and tell us what a mangina is? A man who trots out an endless stream of pseudoscientific quantum woo bollocks. I'm using that clip to get by, Phil. I'm imagining you in a universe not far from here, where the feminists didn't get you. I favour the many worlds interpretation. Has nearly three million followers. So what? Those people follow him because he tells them what they want to hear. Why even mention the number of followers you have? T bloody good point, Phil. I'll be sure to continue never saying that ever. Now then, there are millions of feminists with thousands of gender studies departments and countless charity projects devoted solely to women's rights and interests. There are hardly any men's rights advocates in the world, and they're mostly on the internet. I really hope none of you will be bringing this up at any point, as though it's not yet another sheep shank of hypocrisy in your giant rubber band ball of bullshit. What difference does it make? Why is it that you go on and fucking on about safe spaces and trigger warnings? You are a fucking genius. Uh, hashtag triggered, as they say. Are you willing to publicly acknowledge and admonish the massive amount of hatred, bullying, harassment, and intimidation that a lot of your fans infringe upon people? I, again, show me the body count. And you, never mind how many people have voluntarily stopped using social media for whatever reason. How many people, for instance, have been evicted from a convention for being feminists? Because if you've got nothing, then guess what I've got on this scale?
And I don't mean these tiny disclaimers that you put under the description fold or flash for two seconds at the beginning of the video that you know nobody reads. I mean a public and ongoing anti-bullying stance. You are a bully. Feminists are bullies. Black Lives Matter are bullies. And I am anti-you. Or do you kind of like watching your fans go around harassing people and calling them slurs and telling them to kill themselves? My fans, if you can call them that, are far more likely to go around telling people not to kill themselves. Because there's a disproportionate amount of suicidally depressed people over here who need to laugh and need to love and need to know they're not the ones going insane. You kind of like it, don't you? It's dark at times, but it's not without its charms. See, this is, what, this is why comedy grows in the most downtrodden shitholes in the world. Because the people in the most downtrodden shitholes in the world need comedy. They need to laugh to feel alive. And conversely, it's also why the silver spoon pampered prigs in the expensive upscale universities of the world hate comedy they need to bully to feel alive i mean if that's your thing and i guess that's just what you're into just makes you a dick nice hey christy this guy just called me a dick yeah yeah as though all i'm good for is having sex hey uh, any, 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 any problems any problems you might have with that no cool you're a beta mangina cuck faggot have a nice day why do you find it so hard to believe that feminists are being harassed online? Evidence, my dear. I'll let Professor Moriarty explain it, shall I? Do you understand the key importance of reproducibility and repeatability in scientific research? That's simply going to Google Scholar, doing a 30 second search for keywords and pulling out the first paper you find that backs up your stance is not a particularly credible way to do research. Yes, and simply claiming that feminists are unreciprocally oppressed any more than anyone else without even doing a fucking Google search is even worse. Just slapping on a dunce cap and going, I'm a victim, I'm a victim, doesn't even deserve the accolade of bad science. It is what we call not even wrong that you have to have a much broader overview to read the material, to follow the citations through, to look at the broad brush approach to a particular problem. Pew. Three letters, shortest response ever. I didn't think it would be you, Phil. You do realize that you're as much of a social justice warrior as those you critique? Are you aware that the ridiculous buzzwords you helped to popularize, like SJW and social justice warrior, have all lost whatever meaning they once had, and only serve now as catch-all insults and pejoratives to derail any meaningful conversation? You thought I'd skip you, didn't you, Mikey? Nope, I'm just using you to contradict everyone else. You're a little bit like Leviticus. It's just that you espouse a different form of social justice. Yes, Phil, it's called freedom of speech rather less considerate it's called freedom of expression rather less forgiving it's called freedom of religion and freedom from religion rather less kind form of social justice yes phil the free marketplace of ideas is often unkind and inconsiderate and unforgiving but what it is phil is fair that's why academics don't like it, because academics have grown accustomed to an unlevel playing field. If you identify as an egalitarian, then I'm interested in your take on the usefulness of the concept of the original position as laid out by John Rawls in his theory of justice. <laughs> Oh, well, I, I think I could answer Steve's question now. Which books written by second wave feminists have you read and found interesting? John Rawls in his theory of justice. Or did I just answer my own question?
<laughs> I, I knew this would start happening eventually. If I play you against each other, I can answer all of your questions. <laughs> this, this is how Darren Brown simultaneously beat 11 chess grandmasters. <laughs> I am being very generous to all of us there. As a supporter, as a proponent of freedom of speech, why do you want to quash academic freedom? <laughs> <laughs> if you're not familiar with the concept of academic freedom, it's worth in the UK at least looking up the 1988 Educational Reform Act and seeing what that says about the rights of academics to put across unpopular opinions. <laughs> oh my! Unpopular opinions. Oh wow! Oh fuck me, Phil! but continue to hide behind your cartoon avatars and your childish pseudonyms. Phil! Why are you so obsessed with Anita Sarkeesian? Look, Anita, I'm sorry. I oh! Oh, there I go! There I go, Phil! Fucking hell! Yeah, I know it's a huge shame, but I guess I've technically failed. Oh, it's all gone! Do you really think you can spend your entire life in a perpetual state of emotional immaturity? Do you actually imagine that you will be able to perpetuate your adolescence for your entire existence? It's in- it's in a puddle of goo on the carpet, Phil. It's- ah, oh, we're all fucked. Ah, oh, it's- it's- it's eating through the carpet, Phil. It's eating through the crawl space of the building. I- I don't- I don't know what's- I can't- Phil, we've killed everything, Phil. It's gone. All of it. Phil! Phil!